My dear students, good morning. Today, we are going to discuss a poem, How to Train White Animals, that is written by Kevin Wells, who is an American writer, uh, who has written books based on history. Some of the important books that is written by Kevin Wells are The Jingle Book, that is written in 1899, and The Story of Betty, uh, in the year 1899. Now, talking about the theme of the chapter, as you can see, you have written here, she explained the characteristics of various wild animals in a very funny way. Now, today, we are, I will explain the poem in a very, uh, not in a detailed way. And you just see all the words I have written there. And while I will be explaining the poem, I have written some of the important devices that, we, that I will explain once I will uh, start the explanation part of this poem, right? So, let's start. This humorous poem suggests some dangerous ways to identify or tell wild animals. Now, as I told, this poem talks about different wild animals and identification of wild animals in a very different way, in a very humorous way. If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east, and if there should be to, to you advance a large and tawny beast, if he roars as you as you are dying. You will know it is the Asian lion. So in the very first stanza, the poet Kevin Wells explains about the identification of the Asiatic Asiatic lion. Right? In the very first line, as soon as is used, I told uh, in, when you were studying in class 9th, I told that whenever there is a repetition of vowel sound, as soon as is used. And apart from as soon as, in the line number three and four, in judgment is used. In judgment is a figure of speech in which a line continues without any obstruction as you can see line number 2 and if there should to you advance a large and tawny beast tawny means yellowish brown color I have mentioned all the difficult words there you can go through that while I am explaining right so uh, the first stanza is over talking about the second stanza or if sometime when roaming around a noble wild beast greets you a noble wild beast greets you with black stripes on a yellow ground, just notice if he eats you. This simple rule may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern, discern, identify, recognize. I have mentioned here, you can find out, right? So in the first stanza, the poet has talked about identification of, of the Asiatic lion. In the second stanza, she talks about how to identify the Bengal tiger. If you go to a jungle and you are killed, you are eaten by the uh, the animal, you can easily understand that there is a tiger. Okay, stanza number three. If strolling forth a beast you view, whose height with spots is prepared, as soon as he has leapt on you, you will know it is the leopard. It will do no good to roar with pain. He will only leap and leap again. See, again in this stanza, uh, identification of leopard is used. How you can identify a leopard if you go in a jungle? How will you identify that the animal is a leopard? This is the way to identify. Now talking about the figure of speech, as you can see, alliteration is used in line number third in the third stanza. Alliteration means repetition of consonant sound. Here you can see at at is a consonant sound. So repetition of consonant sound, uh, alliteration, right? And assonance in the very first line. Repetition of O sound. Strolling forth, walking casually. Again, I will uh, tell you to look into that glossary to identify the words, right? Now, moving into now, again, see here a poetic license I have mentioned here. Uh, assonance, I talk, repetition of vowel sound. Engagement, engagement, I told. Whenever a line continues without any obstruction, engagement is used. Alliteration, I told, repetition of consonant sound. Now, inversion, I, I forgot to tell. Inversion is what? Change in the format of a sentence if there should to you advance. Where is the line? The very first stanza, third line. And if there should to you advance. It might just be here you can see the change in the format of a sentence. We don't speak sentences like this. So whenever there is a change in format of a sentence, we say inversion is used. Now talking about here, uh, inversion I say, now poetic license, very important uh, literary device. A poetic license. A liberty to the poet to change the spellings in order to rhyme it with the previous word. Repeat. A liberty to the poet uh, to change the spellings in order to create 
a rhyming effect is known as poetic license the spelling of lip lip is the spelling but the spelling uh, that is used by the poets is l e p now uh, moving to the next stanza if when you are walking around your yard you meet a creature there who hugs you very very hard be sure it is a bear if you have any doubts i guess he will give you just one more caress caress means loving touch all the words that i have mentioned that are mentioned in this stanza words of gender you can uh, have a look over those words and uh, listen to that my explanation uh, side by side so when you are hugged by a and by an animal that hugs you very tightly that embraces you very tightly you can find out that the animal is a bear again the very first and the second line in german is used you can see the line continues from the first to the second uh, as long as is used in the second line of this stanza a uh, repetition of e sound uh alliteration is used ha sound in the third line next stanza though to distinguish beasts of prey a novice might not plus the crocodile you always may tell from the high nadas high nadas come with very smiles but if they weep they are crocodiles now if high nadas are weeping they are crocodiles see how the poet is explaining the, the different identification of animals or by animals uh, right so again in jam is used in the very first and second line and the in fourth line in jam is used there is no new obstruction from the in the first line and line continues right and the very last stanza i'm going to explain uh, the true chameleon is small a lizard sort of thing he hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing if there is anything on the tree it is a chameleon you see so if there is anything in a tree that is not a lizard of course that is a chameleon written by caroline wells my dear uh, uh, let me wind up and before i wind up i just uh, tell you i will also give you what audio content related to the explanation part and i uh, will also giving you some notes uh, so that you can easily understand the poem that's all for today's class thank you